Boeing 737NG, engine ground run and drains inspection. So you'll see from the picture the oil trailing up the cowlings. So we wanted to try and find the source of this leak. Uh, we do this by operating the engine and uh, in inspecting the drains, which you'll see on the pictures, comes from various components. The manual tells you exactly which drain pipe comes from which component and it's even identified on the pipe itself to make it a bit easier. Uh, the idea will be to run the engine and physically go and have a look, uh, which is a dangerous procedure. Look at your company procedures if you're even allowed to do this. It's something I've done a, quite a few times, so I'm quite confident in doing this. Um, I wouldn't be confident on different engines, bigger engines, but, uh, but that's just a personal thing. So I'll try and go through the basic engine start procedure, uh, just a, a quick run through. So fuel pumps on for the number one engine. I go through the panel up and down and just scan it, make sure all the switches are in the correct positions. We're only starting one engine, so that's why we only put the left pumps on. Uh, put the APU on. We'll leave ground power uh, connected, so we're not using the APU for AC. Window heat, probe heat, it's not necessary. Anti-ice and wing anti-ice uh, should be off. Ignition, doesn't matter, both on the left hand side. So, packs off, engine bleeds on. and put the APU bleed on. Anti-collision light on, once you've got clearance from the tower, which we did earlier. Levers fully idle, cut off switches to cut off and parking brake is on. So put the engine start switch to ground and release. And we're looking for start valve open, light on the upper DU, low oil pressure light goes off. N2 increases on the lower display. We'll start to get N1 rotation. Fuel's gone in. Looking for fuel flow. And we're looking at the EGT now. Making sure it doesn't run away. Well, you don't get a hung start. Start to cut out. So that position automatically goes to off. And the start valve closes.
So engine running, approach it very carefully from this angle. You'll see residue of oil that's more solvent because we sprayed the lower engine with solvent. But we're looking for a, a drip, a physical drip. And the concern we would have is, we're thinking it could be the gearbox uh, seal. It's like a carbon seal, or it could be the IDG drive seal. Just checking for external leaks, the, the mag chip detectors look okay, looking at obvious pipes leaking, that's all oil. See oil filter. Okay, so the engine shut down. We're quite happy. There's nothing to report. There's no leaks that I saw after five minutes duration. So what we did notice when we open the cowlins, which is fairly common, but because there was quite an excessive amount of oil externally, we wanted to rule this out. Is uh, when you're servicing the oil, you can spill it and there's like a catch, a scupper around the uh, fill cap, which can drain. And if someone's filled the can too quickly, it does this and it'll just blow all around the lower part of the engine make a bit of a mess so we cleaned it up and it's been fine and that's the oil filled cap to shut the engine down just put the uh, cut-off lever to cut-off, shuts the fuel, stops the ignition. Get the low oil pressure light come back on. You want an air source at this point in case you get a tailpipe fire. So you're still monitoring EGT and you'd use the air from the APU to put the starter back in and try and blow the fire out. Anti-collision light off. And the EC's shut down because so it's got its dedicated generator on the engine to power the EC's. Safety thing. Uh, hydraulics off. Fuel pumps off.
uh, bleed off for the APU and APU switch to off kill, shuts down the APU it takes a minute to do this it's a cooldown cycle so fast forward there it is and that's the aircraft safe and fully serviceable.